The plan to control the masses involves this one liquid, a movement that the World Economic Forum seems to support. Heck, it's not like they've said anything to try and improve our health, right? If that was the case, they'd probably tell us to get off of McDonald's, Chick-fil-A, Arby's, Dairy Queen, all these different junk foods that we consume. But when it comes to alcohol, much like Budweiser's, Jack Daniels, Grey Goose, Smyrna, you know, whatever people prefer to drink. It looks like the plan to have even more of the population hooked on it has worked with incredibly awful results. Watch until the end because I got some footage straight from the World Economic Forum that will leave you speechless. Well, there were a lot of habits that were adopted during the pandemic that Oh, yeah. persisted after the pandemic subsided. And federal data shows alcohol consumption rose dramatically during the COVID-19 pandemic as Americans struggled to cope with stress and isolation. Yeah, now we're seeing the cost of all that consumption. The number of alcohol-related deaths has really surged. Mississippi seeing the largest jump with a 159% increase between 2018 and 2021. You see also Delaware um, deaths to, due to alcohol rose by 73%. Joining us now is George Koop. He's the director of the National Institute on Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism. Thank you for being here with us. So talk to us about some of the reasons that we saw such a sharp increase in alcohol consumption during the pandemic. I imagine that some of it was something to do, but uh, we've, we've continued to see people have these problems or have these habits now. So, uh, thank, thank you for having me on in uh, this discussion. You know, as we've seen with other uh, uh, large-scale crises like the 9-11, uh, Hurricane Katrina, you know, some people drank more uh, alcohol um, during the pandemic and as the pandemic unfolded. And uh, we attribute this to um, individuals, you know, using alcohol to cope with stress. And so... Uh, People who were more likely to increase their alcohol use during the pandemic were those with a history of, of alcohol use disorder, alcohol problems, and history of anxiety or depression, or also were struggling with um, coping with the stressors of the pandemic, which could be everything, as, as you know well, from job losses to job concerns to being infected concerns to isolation. So all of these things, I think, have contributed to this um, significant increase, and and I might add to a dramatic increase in the uh, harmful effects associated with alcohol. Now, before we get any further into this, I'm gonna need your help, right? First off, do you agree that more people were consuming alcohol during the pandemic compared to before it? Comment a quick one if you agree, comment a two if you don't agree. Next up, go ahead and hit the like button because I already know there's gonna be a lot of angry people who will definitely try to suppress this message. So make sure you guys help out with a quick click as this is always a huge help and huge boost for the algo. And lastly, make sure you are a part of our community please consider subscribing to the channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss out on future videos. All right, so getting back on topic here, guys. Do you remember how liquor stores were deemed essential while other places had to close down? With the uncertainty over what's closing and what isn't, Discount Liquor in Milwaukee has seen big time buying these past few weeks. It's, it's like December. It's like Christmas time where you know, people are just out, you know, buying kind of everything, you know, whatever, whatever they like, whatever their drink of choice is. Governor Tony Evers safer at home order deemed liquor stores essential, meaning like grocery stores or pharmacies, they can remain open. It is I, in most people's eyes, uh, probably the majority of the people in Wisconsin, it would be an essential business. You know, it's, it's part of the culture. Many other states have kept liquor stores open, though others haven't. This was in Denver, where lines wrapped around stores when the mayor there announced they would close. He later reversed that decision. Now, I'm not sure if you guys know about this, but were you aware that some countries actually tried to cure the C-19 virus by drinking a lot? And I mean, a lot of alcohol. In Iran, I think it was around 700 people that died trying to cure the virus by ingesting methanol. And this was most probably under the assumption that the alcohol could kill the C-19 on different surfaces, including our hands. So drinking it would probably have the same effect, right? Wrong. This now reminds me of Saudi Arabia and how they said that they wouldn't be lifting the ban on alcohol in their country as they discussed it during the World Economic Forum in Davos last year. Don't believe me? Have a look at this. Saudi has been very transparent about where it stands and everything. His Excellency said transparency comes first. We were very clear. Um, um, I think we, we all even heard it from our head of state where we stand on serving alcohol. So the short answer is we are going to continue with our current laws. 
we have been doing very well and we have been competing, as I mentioned, the numbers earlier. We've actually been uh, outperforming uh, globally when it comes to tourism with what we currently have to offer today. There's a lot to go around without uh, int introducing anything new. I mean, what do you guys think of that? You have to wonder, why are they asking a question about alcohol in Davos of all places? You would think that the WEF stands for everything that's good for the people of the world, right? They want us to eat bugs, stay stuck in 15 minute cities, take all the jabs and boosters that they push for, but alcohol, that's an exception. That's something people can enjoy. Are you freaking kidding me? And while it can be a nice break from alcohol for many, for some it can be a challenge or even a health concern. I talked to Jim Scarpes from Gateway Foundation about the warning signs of alcohol abuse disorder. I think what we know about Dry January is it's a great opportunity for people who are contemplating either cutting back on their alcohol use or maybe eliminating alcohol together from their life to assess the mental health and physical benefits of making that decision. It's also a great time to kind of analyze or assess when do I drink and why. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of in individuals, that'll be a great time to really make some different decisions about how and when to use alcohol in their life. The problem is there's a subset of the population that may want to stop drinking or cut back on their drinking that are not able to do it on their own. And those individuals are the individuals we really want to reach out to at Gateway because what we see with those situations is something we call or the industry calls alcohol use disorder. And with treatment, it can get better, but without treatment, it tends to get progressively worse. And how does a person know when it's time to actually seek the help that you offer? That's a great question. I think that the most important thing is to recognize how often are you drinking? Mm. Is the drinking becoming more and more frequent? Are you drinking to self-medicate feelings of depression or anxiety? Um, is it impacting your relationships in a negative way or your job? Are you having withdrawal symptoms when you stop drinking? So you need to keep drinking to eliminate those symptoms. All of those issues tend to speak to a potential alcohol use disorder. Um, and what we really wanna do is get those individuals into treatment as soon as possible because it is a progressive illness and over time it gets worse and it can lead to hospitalization for some people incarceration and even death now to be frank here alcohol throughout time has taken more lives and caused more broken families compared to what the last three years of the health crisis and if they really cared about us why not build public gyms why not encourage healthy living instead they're talking about alcohol consumption did you know that there's not one newborn in existence that would pick alcohol over milk alcohol much like smoking becomes addictive when you start and stick to it it's meant to be addictive and it's portrayed in all of our movies, all the different shows that you watch on Netflix, Hulu, or whatever you happen to stream your content from. When somebody's going through a tough time, the bar is where they head because that's going to numb the pain along with their brain, if you ask me. And another health crisis being predicted in the very near future will again see more and more people go down toward alcohol to drown their sorrows. Because it's not a secret that high alcohol consumption affects our cognitive abilities. It can make us slur our words, make us all fall on our feet, have us make all these bad decisions. And wait, one guy's coming to mind that does all this even without the alcohol. I guess they want us all to be more like him. All kidding aside, I get that alcohol is something that's used to celebrate occasions and all that, that's cool. But know that it could also be used to probably control people to follow whatever they are given and whatever they're told That's that being drunk really doesn't give us the ability to make good choices. But what are your thoughts on this? Are we now gonna see a concerted effort to get more people on booze for the holiday season? Or did all of this just happen by chance? Let me know what you guys think in the comments. And before I go, I wanna thank you all for being here. Keep safe and I'll catch you on the next one.